Hey guys, we're seeing some fireworks in the debt ceiling battle royale. Now, if you're just tuning in, the federal government will run out of money in a couple months if small government Republicans don't raise the debt ceiling. This week, those Republicans are pushing a bill to take actual default off the table and possibly Social Security and Medicare to protect some of the human shields that big spenders normally use to force through ceiling hikes. The background here is every debt ceiling, the big spenders use financial collapse as a human shield, which works because anything sudden, such as halting $640 billion in debt payments, can actually collapse our Ponzi fractional reserve system that is permanently balanced on a knife's edge. As for the Social Security and Medicare, one of the more cynical strategies governments use is to pretend the most popular programs are the only ones it is humanly possible to cut. Called the Washington Monument Strategy, or Firemen First, they defund the firemen, the police, garbage collection, school lunches, aid to the elderly. In other words, hand over the money or grandma and the kids get it. Of course, they do this to protect all of the other trillions of government waste uh, spending that is deeply unpopular. Outrageous pensions where government workers make twice what the rest of us do and retire at 47 with benefits we would never dream of, plus the many hundreds of billions wasted in corrupt boondoggles or funding the activist industrial complex that uses your taxes to pay rioters and professional cancelers. The kids' lunch money is sacrificed so cronies and activists can get paid. Now, ideally, we'd have an honest media to call them out on firemen first. Plus, we'd have a full reserve banking system that wasn't vulnerable to default. Sadly, we don't live in that world. And so this effort, taking the financial panic and the school lunches off the table, is a good thing. Now, going by history, it's not going to happen. Either the human shield strategy works or the bureaucrats game it into parity. But just for fun, what if it did? Well, in theory, the feds would have to immediately go to zero deficit, meaning about $1.4 trillion in spending reductions this year alone. And this would be concentrated in the waste, the handouts to corporation, the handouts for foreign aid, the wars of choice, the job-killing environmental regulators, the bureaucrat paradises from the Department of Education to regime media, NPR, Economically, it gets interesting. Now, a $1.4 trillion spending reduction looks like a hit. That's about 6% of GDP. But it's actually an enormous boost to the wealth of the American people. This is because government statisticians, naturally, pretend that government spending has the same value as if you spent your own dollars. In reality, nothing's been destroyed. The government is simply giving that buying power back to the people instead of hogging up the real resources we could have used. So there's more steel and construction workers for us to build factories and fewer bureaucrats paid to punish you for creating jobs. GDP goes down, but the wealth goes up. And that's only the beginning, because returning trillions of the people to actually invest would tame the inflation beast. That means the Fed could quit strangling the economy with savage rate hikes. And finally, and deliciously, a debt ceiling is effectively a balanced budget amendment, but one that targets the most wasteful spending. Put them together, and letting the debt ceiling work would transform the country, a wealthier nation with a stronger economy and a smaller government that spends less on corruption and activism and more on what we actually need. All right, we'll be watching. See you next time.